Hi everyone. So in 2012, I was working under the worst physical conditions I've ever experienced. We were a small team, just fresh out of university, and we decided you want to make this game. And we were sitting in a building that was scheduled for destruction. Like six months later, it was destroyed completely. So some of the utilities were not working at all. There were no heat, for example. The power was sort of stable. The internet was sort of stable. And it worked. the water worked sometimes. And it was so cold in the winter that we had to um, wear hats and gloves indoors when we were eating our food. The picture is really bad. I know it was before mobile phone cameras were good. And we ate from like a free paper as plates, and I'm over there wearing gloves because it was so cold. But a phone call changed this. We've been in the talk with an investor, and one day the phone rang, and he told us, you're going to be funded. And we moved out of, moved out of this place. And this kind of changed the trajectory of my career completely, and it was the first business, real business partner that I've ever worked with. Would be many more along the way, of course, but it was the first real one. And this is what my talk is about, mostly. Business partners as an indie developer. And shortly about us, we're a Danish company, four guys only. We have offices in a super old castle, which is cool and annoying at some times. <laughs> and we have uh, shipped one major game called Block and Mock. Um, and we're shipping another one called Disco Flip uh, in two months' time, depending on if everything works, of course. And um, yeah, that's us, looking silly. The reason I want to do this, this talk, it's about, about the initial contact you want to make, finding the right business partner. It's, uh, compared to the last talk, it's more on the softer side communication and so on. It's about, it's about going from that initial contact to the contract. What, what can go wrong? How do you deal with that? How, how are things? And it's about working with another business partner, another one outside your team, which is something that indie developers have not that much experience in, at least in the beginning. And it's about termination something that we don't want to deal with, but sometimes happens. Um, and the reason, the big reason, is that we made mistakes as an indie team. Horrible mistakes, business-wise. And I want to maybe limit that for you guys, <laughs> give you some heads up uh, for things that can go wrong. So the first part, finding the right business partner. Of course, there are metrics, there are numbers, you can find someone with a lot of experience, million daily active users they want to push into your game, investors with huge amount of experience, and other really well-developed partners that will aid you. But it's hard, it's a jungle out there. When we first wanted to have a publisher, we thought that would be a good idea because we have no users, we're brand new, maybe some expertise from an experienced guy would be a good idea. Um, we started looking for a publisher, and the amount of publishers were overwhelming. And we had not real that much clue about what to look for. What, what's a good thing in a publisher, of, besides numbers, of course. And we looked, and, and it dawned on us that maybe the big numbers is just it's not the only thing you should look at. For example, we are shipping our game to China. And we have chosen not the biggest or the best or the most experienced developer um, there to do it, publisher, but someone we really thought could do the right job, and their CEO was Danish, which made the lines of communication much clearer than if it was a Chinese person. Because we have the same culture, I can say Danish stuff to him that only we understand as Danes, and that improved our relationship. Also, bigger publishers, for example, might have a tendency to, to be more hard on, on your game. They might drop you faster than a smaller publisher who really needs this game to succeed. And that's also something to consider. 
So say you find someone you you like, someone you in your gut feel, and the numbers match up, and it's a good fit. I think this is a good fit. You want to go from that contact to contracts, and I've drawn a really accurate map of that process here. So you start at the beginning, and you want to go to the deal, but but there are paths along the way where things can go awry, where they can go wrong. For example, you go to get a right turn, and you end up with the swamp of fading. And somehow, the messages just get slower, and you, forgot, you forget things, and things are not progressing as fast as you want to. The momentum is lost. And eventually, you'll just end up all the things fading out into nothingness. And that's a real risk. We've had that for us. We tried it. But say you go the right way, but you end up in this sort of external influences. You come home from the, con from the conference, you found the perfect publisher. Oh my god, he's the best, has amazing numbers, it's going to be great. But your team thinks otherwise, and they vote against you, and nothing happens. Or uh, you make this amazing deal with another company, and you go to do the co-production, and it's going to be super profitable, but their division of the company is suddenly shut down, and the thing is terminated immediately. It can happen, external influences. You can also go and meet the monster of busy, that you have too many projects on your hands, so you have to scrap features, you have to, to delay other things, and your investor is angry with you, or you're unfocused in what you want to do, and nothing really happens, and they break off their, their relationship with you, the business relationship, it stops. And the last one, which is the saddest one, the heart of loneliness, we've been there, is you think the initial contact is good, and you really want to make this happen, but they don't think that, or nothing, they forget you, and, and the, your email gets lost or overseen, and even though you try again and again, there's no reply, and if the reply finally comes, the information is vague and, and non-existent. And that is a thing which, which we've tried a couple of times, and it, we've done it uh, with people before, and it's not on purpose, of course, but it's, it's a real fact that it might happen. But say you go through all this, and you make all the way to the deal, and it's, you have, like, you want to make a contract this person, and they are, they are ready for it now. Um, you have something which most indie developers are utterly unprepared for. It's a, a monster from another world that pokes it he his head into uh, the game development sometimes. It's the contracts. Contracts are another syntax. They, they are hard to understand, and it's complicated and super long sentences. For example, we have this clause from a contract that we signed with a Russian company. It was an amazing relationship, and we had a great project. It was profitable, um, but it had this part in the, in the contract. Basically, it means that if you don't understand, if there's a discrepancy between the Russian and the English, the Russian is the right one. So we had to find someone that actually spoke Russian, read Russian, and he went through the entire contract and ensured us that it was okay, nothing, we didn't sell our soul or 50% of our company to this, this Russian company. Um, and we, initially when we uh, signed with people, the agreement on the contract, we thought it would be, it's just a contract, how hard can it be? Uh, and it took a long time. Longer time. They, it, there are the same problems with contracts as with game development. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes you haven't seen it. Your investor comes in and says, this is completely unacceptable, even though you think it's okay, and you have to rewrite it. Our first contract we did was, it was supposed to take three weeks. It wasn't that big of a contract. It took us four months to complete, and 11 revisions. It, you need uh, someone proficient, in this field of expertise, or you have to spend a lot of time learning it. I've spent a lot of time learning it, and speaking, and understanding the cryptic messages of, of this syntax. 
And the important thing is at least to get a contract, because we've done work where we thought, oh, the contract will fix that sometime in the process, and then they cancel on us, and we wasted three weeks doing a project we thought would go through, but it didn't go through. So get a contract fast initially, at least a basic one saying, yeah, let's do the work together, and you can figure out the other more detailed parts later. Uh, and be sure to, to to pay attention to every part of the contract, even the things you find might be a bit silly, because they can have big impact. They did for us. There's a term called force majeure. It means superior force. It's a clause that's sometimes in contracts, and it has to do with disasters, natural disasters, war, stuff like that. If a war happens, you are not liable to to ship your game on time or anything, because you can't prevent it. And we, ha we were working with an Israeli publisher at one point, and we were doing the contract with them, like signing it and, and trying to make it, make it work. And then a war broke out. The armed conflict between Israel and another party, and the lawyer making the contract with us was drafted into the army and had to go fight people. And we were unable to do anything about that. And our investor was anxious to get this contract signed, but we had to point to the clause saying, force majeure, we can't do anything about it. At one point, we have had a Skype call cut short because sirens went off in the background. And our business partner said, um, that city is under attack by missiles. We need to go to a shelter. Oh, okay, I guess we we'll talk some other time, maybe we hope. And and this clause saved us. So be sure to read the contract thoroughly, even the silly parts of it. You sign a contract now. You are now business partners, and you work together. But things are not as before. You have new things to take into consideration. One of them is communication. That they might not understand the same terms as you do. Things you think are 100% sure, that's how we say it. it. How can it be misinterpreted? It can. So be sure that you're on the same page with things. Cultural differences is also something that can impact you. Um, again, in Israel, we found out that the weekend is not Saturday, Sunday. It's actually Friday, Friday, Saturday. So we could not work with them on Fridays at all, which was a surprise to us. Sometimes when you work with partners, they want to have technical aspects of their company in your app. SDKs, homebrewed stuff, analytics, which you are might not prepared to, to deal with. And it can give you delays if they need to fix a bug on their end. Because it's it's a new thing to work with other people, and they have a different time frame than you, and they might have other clients and other users that they need to serve as well. And, and it's something that we relinquish as an indie developer when you go into a business partnership. This is a super simple thing. When you work alone, you are alone, of course. There are other things than this, other advantages and disadvantages, but this is just to highlight a point that when you work with someone, you relinquish agility. You can't just work 80 hours per week and then just solve the problem, because you have someone else that needs to do their thing, and they might just work 37 hours a week or 40 hours a week. And you have to plan ahead that they are not working at the same speed or, or might not be as proficient in the technical aspects as you are. They might make mistakes as well. And as an indie, you're used to just working by yourself in your cave until you fix the damn problem. You just more coffee and then add it. And you are now dealing with other people who have different kinds of work attitudes and have different kinds of restrictions in their way of doing it. So be aware that it's a real thing that you lose when you don't go, in, go into a partnership with someone. Even good partnerships and bad partnerships, every one of them. And then something happens also, which I have to, to highlight. It's uh, when contracts end, termination. 
And you, we did not pay that much attention because when you go into a business partnership with someone, you, you sign the contract and you read it, you don't think in the beginning, oh, so when it goes wrong, what will happen? You think this is going to be the best partnership ever and nothing will go wrong, of course. We were that naive. And, and it led us to an unfavorable deal, unfavorable exit term with the company because we didn't pay attention to the termination. We didn't have an exit out of the contracts they had, we didn't have it. And it's something you need to have, even as an indie developer. You need to be able to say, okay, these publishers are not good, this investor is not good for me, this co-production is just not working. Too much time, too little gain from it. So the termination is something that might happen to you, or you might want to terminate with someone, and that's okay. It's a business relationship, it's not your friends. They can also be your friends, of course, but the business thing is the most important thing. But there's also an upside. I know I've been talking about things that go bad, but usually, and in 90% of the cases, at least for us, things go well. And it's, we've had so much uh, expertise given, we have had uh, amazing networking opportunities, we had financial stability, and it all depended on our business partners. All caps would not exist today if it weren't for them. It wouldn't even have been started. So I'm imploring you, even though the road might seem far and you need to go through all this other stuff than game development, it's worth it. It's really, it really is. You can get to live in a castle like this, maybe. Uh, so I have a takeaway here, in the end, um, with the three main points I want to do, make with this talk. Any questions, if we have time? Yes, yeah, we, have a, we have a little bit of time. Uh, and actually, you know, I think this is a really keen point that I think everyone who wants to make games and make an indie studio has to understand is you're not just making a game, you're making a business, and this stuff happens to be essential. Yes. Uh, I mean, if anyone has any particular questions, put your hand up now, otherwise I will just ask some. Um, you know, we're looking like, you don't have to be shy with me, it's okay. Uh, you know, we're in safe company. Um, so... I mean, the key thing here was that termination thing. And I, I've had situations where uh, I was, we were doing some work for hire for a studio. I happen to be really good friends with the, um, the, the management team, but the guy who's running their contracts, shall we say, um, somewhat less than professional, and um, changed the terms without actually re looking at the contract. Well, and, yeah, how, I mean, how do you do with stuff like that? I mean, uh, we, we dealt with it, but... I mean, that's the kind of stuff when you say bad stuff happens, isn't it? It, it is. Um, you need to be aware of it. You need to, need to draw on the expertise of experienced people. You need to have a lawyer friend, maybe, uh, and, and you just approach it logically and, and calmly. Mm. Don't do anything rash and throw the papers <laughs> in the air and say that's it. Uh, and... and but beware that the contracts are binding. They are, mm. they are legal documents that will make you do the things they say. But you also have to be able to afford to enforce them. Uh, in the case, in our particular project, A, the money wasn't worth it, and, and B, the relationship with the management was worth more, and we actually let it slide, despite the fact that we actually could have claimed the full payment yes. regardless. But... But that's the thing I think is really interesting is when actually the legals are incredibly valuable and, and will defend you, but you have to be prepared to back them up, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's something that indie developers, sometimes they don't have the resources to mm. do it, they don't have the funding to do like lawsuits or, or larger things mm. um, and talk to the investor and maybe they can see something out, but also need to be ensured that you can enforce the things in your contract and have an out somehow, somehow be able to deal with it.